Over 10 years, 20 movies, and 45 hours, Marvel has taken us on a wild intergalactic hunt for the Infinity Stones. And unless you've memorized every post credit scene, read 80 years of comic books, as well as every nugget of IMDb trivia, you probably can't keep straight who had which Infinity Stone when and why. Allow me to help you. So here is your guide. How Thanos gets all six Infinity Stones in under 10 minutes. And the clock starts right now, so let's hit it. We're gonna jump all over the timelines of 20 movies to tell the Stone's spoiler-laden story chronologically, but we'll begin with the Collector's explanation in Guardians of the Galaxy. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. So yeah, this Big Bang creates six multicolored gems, each with distinct, nearly limitless powers. The Space Stone comes on the scene first, that pretty blue one in Thanos' gauntlet, but the MCU introduces it long before we, or the characters, know what it is, during this post credit scene in 2011's Thor. If we can figure out how to tap it, maybe unlimited power. The Magic Space Square, or Tesseract, as they call it until Thanos pulls the Space Stone from inside it, don't worry, we'll get there, is protected by King Odin on Asgard for eons, until he takes it to Earth for some reason, and leaves it in Norway for another perfectly good reason, I'm sure. This is where Red Skull gets his grimy hands on it in Captain America the First Avenger. Red Skull uses the Tesseract to create immensely powerful weapons for his Nazi spin-off enterprise, Hydra, so Cap had to smack him with his shield for it. Yeah, he loves that move. During their climactic plane fight, the Tesseract burns a hole through Red Skull's floor and falls into the ocean. And while Cap takes his ice nap, Iron Man's dad fishes it out and begins doing tests on it, because science guys can't get enough of their all-powerful mystery cubes. Write that down. When Mr. and Mrs. Iron Man's parents are assassinated by Bucky when he's the brainwashed and unwashed Winter Soldier, the cube goes back to Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. until Dr. Eric Selvig is asked to check it out. Selvig is Jane Foster's scientist boss, and Jane is Thor's scientist girlfriend. Lots of scientists in this Norse god comic. Anyway, back to that scene where Fury shows up with the briefcase. So Selvig's mind is being controlled by Loki, that little stinker, and thus the events of the first Avengers movie unfold as a mad dash quest for control of the Tesseract slash Space Stone. You will have your war as Guardian. Loki knows he won't be able to just stroll in and yoink the Tesseract, so the Other, who is essentially Thanos' executive assistant, gives Loki this scepter, which can shoot energy blasts and control minds because it is powered by the Mind Stone. Sorry, getting ahead of myself because we didn't know that yet, and Thanos may have not known it either because if he had, he probably wouldn't have handed over one of his Infinity Stones to a doofus like Loki. I have been falling! For 30 minutes! You can handle it from here. Loki's surprise attack prompts the Avengers to assemble for the first time in 2012's The Avengers, even though they didn't really have anything to avenge quite yet. So it takes two Iron Man movies, one Thor, one Captain America, and an Incredible Hulk with a different Bruce Banner to get to this point. But now, the Infinity Stone storyline really begins to cook. Luckily for Loki, the Avengers are so busy fighting each other that he has time to use the Tesseract slash Space Stone to open a portal to another dimension to allow the Chitauri death troops through. But Iron Man nukes their mothership and Black Widow closes the hole with the scepter. Loki loses and the new, improved, but still incredible Hulk does this to his face. God. The Tesseract slash Space Stone goes with Thor to fix his Rainbow Bridge teleportation road, aka the Bifrost, and it remained in Asgard until the whole place is blown to hell in Thor Ragnarok. But we'll get to that later. Hang on, hang on. I'll be back around shortly. Thor The Dark World drops a third rock into the mix the Reality Stone, which has the power to bend the laws of physics and alter reality. The Dark Elves liquefy the stone into a weapon called the Aether in an attempt to plunge reality into darkness during the Convergence when all nine realms align every 5,000 years. 
Okay, that sounds confusing, but they're dark elves. They want everyone else in darkness, and the movie's called The Dark World. You get the gist. Simple. Any questions? But Jane Foster gets infested with the ether instead, so Thor and Jane have to explode all the dark elves to stop their evil plan. Okay, here is where we met the Collector, that guy who first explained the stones to the Guardians and to, well, the rest of us. Thor's fellow as Guardians leave the Aether slash Reality Stone at the Collector's intergalactic storage unit on Nowhere because they worry about having two Infinity Stones in one realm since the Tesseract slash Space Stone is held in Odin's vault. One down, five to go. While Cap gets an old friend reacquainted with his fists, the Guardians tango with Ronan the Accuser for control of the Power Stone. Dance off, bro. Me and you. This purple Power Stone can level everybody and everything, and just touching it will implode most beings. So Star-Lord has to play a long game of hot potato to get the stone from Ronan. The Guardians dish the Power Stone with the Nova Corpse on Xandar, and everyone sleeps peacefully knowing that they won't be disintegrated. Yet. That's actually murder. It's one of the worst crimes of all, so. Back on Earth, the scepter returns when it falls into the hands of Hydra in Avengers Age of Ultron. They use the scepter slash mind stone to perform human experiments and create the enhanced, because Disney can't say mutant until they buy X-Men and or Fox, so enhanced twins known as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. You didn't see that coming? The Avengers recover the scepter with the intention of hiding it in Odin's vault. But Iron Man, still suffering from the shock of fighting the Chitauri and losing nearly everything he held dear during Iron Man 3, wants to use the scepter to defend Earth. Iron Man and human form Hulk, Bruce Banner, program the artificial intelligence known as Ultron to protect the planet. But like HAL 9000, Skynet, and Dominic Toretto, Ultron goes rogue. So I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. <laughs> Ultron drops a city and the ball, and the Scepter's Mind Stone ends up literally in the mind of Vision, who is part and parcel to the stone. So at that point, the Avengers have a living, breathing Infinity Stone fighting for the good guys. Which doesn't do much because Cap and Iron Man beef over Bucky, while Ant-Man bursts onto the scene first in a solo venture, then in both teeny and humongous varieties. Ah, uh, look, I want to say, I know you know a lot of super people, so... Thanks for thanking of me. This is when Doctor Strange flies in on his sentient cloak to control the Time Stone, a green gem that can manipulate time. The stone is encased in the Eye of Agamotto to protect its use and abuse from splitting the universe into conflicting timelines. You know, like in that really old movie, Back to the Future Part Two. Jesus, Tony, how old is this guy? I don't know, I didn't carbon date him, he's on the young side. Doctor Strange masters the Time Stone and traps evil demon dude Dormammu in a time loop until he backs up off Earth. Later, the wizard locks the Eye of Agamotto away so no one else can try to get cute with time again. All right, so bye bye. Hey. The Infinity Stones chill out for three more Phase 3 Marvel movies, Guardians Vol. 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Black Panther. But they were just getting their beauty sleep while Thanos armchair quarterbacks his master plan. Thor Ragnarok gives us another peek into Odin's vault, where we see a fake replica of Thanos' gauntlet and the very real Tesseract that Loki is finally able to steal, like he's been trying to do since before Hulk did that thing to his face. Yep, that's the one. And it's all led up to this moment, when Thanos, aka the Grizzly Grimace, launches his Infinity War by hopping off that throne to start fetching new rocks for his collection. Off screen, Thanos begins his Steamroll the Universe campaign on Xandar by laying waste to the Nova Corps and retrieving that purple wonder, the Power Stone. Thanos and his fugly foursome wipe out the fleeing Asgardians and pry the Space Stone from Loki's cold dead hands. That's when Team Thanos splits up to retrieve the remaining four stones. That's right, four. One we still haven't had the pleasure of meeting quite yet. In New York, Doctor Strange and his Time Stone are kidnapped and rocketed back to Titan, Thanos' home planet. The Guardians arrive on Nowhere to collect the Reality Stone from the Collector, but they are too late and Thanos already has it. He nabs Gamora because she's the only one who knows where the final gem is kept, the Soul Stone. 
Our old pal Red Skull tells our new buddy the Purple People Killer that he'll have to sacrifice his love to obtain the mysterious orange gem. So Thanos chucks Gamora over the edge and leaves one stone richer. We don't do that here. Thanos takes the battle to Earth, where the Avengers and the Wakandans defend Vision and the Mind Stone that's lodged in his forehead. But with five stones in his gauntlet, Thanos is too powerful. With a long-promised snap of his fingers, half of the universe goes poof. And Ant-Man gets trapped in the Quantum Realm, which means Ant-Man and his quantum power might be the Avengers' only hope for fixing what Thanos has done. Cool. Yeah. If it ain't broke. And with that, it's 10 minutes.